Dead bodies will continue to be transformed into the flesh-eating ghouls. Hello, and welcome to episode 2 of Pathophysiology of the Living Dead, Origin of Species. I'm Spooky Bill, and today we're going to talk about the different types of zombies. Now, I've got a lot of information to cover, so there won't be a lot of clowning around in this episode. Wah! Now, if you recall in episode 1, we briefly touched on how controversial defining life and death can be. Well, let me tell you, that's nothing compared to the controversy that goes among zombie fans in defining what a zombie really is. There are basically three schools of thought. The first, and probably the most belligerent and outspoken, is that of the zombie purist. They follow the formula that George Romero gave us in Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead. They believe that a zombie is a shambling, reanimated corpse. They don't think any further than wanting to eat your flesh. They don't talk, and they never, ever run. The second school of thought is that as long as it's a reanimated corpse, it's a zombie. They don't care if it runs, thinks, talks, but if it's not dead, it's not a zombie. Now the third school of thought says, hey, before Romero, all zombies were voodoo-style zombies, and this is a person who has no will of their own. They are under a spell or hypnosis to carry out the wills of their master. They're slaves. They don't eat flesh. Most were living, but some were dead. Now the flesh-eating ghouls in Night of the Living Dead were never called zombies, but the public perceived them as zombies, and thus started an evolution of species. Now, in 2002, when Danny Boyle's 28 Days Later came out, most of the public saw those living infected as zombies, and thus became another rung in the evolutionary ladder of the modern zombie. Now, the heated debate between these three schools goes on and on, and actually it gets way out of hand. And while I prefer the slow-moving shamblers, I actually would have to subscribe to the third group of thought. And that's what we're going to base this series around. And not to offend any purists here, but not all the creatures in Night of the Living Dead were slow-moving. Not all of them strictly ate human flesh. And some of them even used tools which obviously requires a degree of thought. Now, if you search Wikipedia, you'll find a list of zombie films. I'll throw a link up in the show notes. Anyway, I went through this list, and I took out all the films that weren't zombies. Now, I'm not being a purist here. Some of them were actually werewolves, aliens, vampires, and while a vampire is undead, there's no way I'm going to call it a zombie. I also took out films that I could not watch or find at least two detailed synopses of. And this left me with a list of 309 out of 320 films. That's 96.6% .6 of the films on that list that I sampled. From that set of films, I classified two orders under the class of zombie. Zombie Vita and Zombie Mortis. Zombie Mortis, of course, being the reanimated dead, making up a percentage of 867 Zombie Vita being the living style zombie and making up 13.3%. Now I took those two orders and put them into a chronological bar graph. And we see some interesting trends here. In 1932, the movie White Zombie was released starring Bela Lugosi. And this is credited as being the first zombie movie. Uh, these are your voodoo style zombies. As you can see, between 1932 and 1965, there weren't many zombie films. We reached a height in 1961 and 1965 of a total of six films. And through most of this time frame, you see that the zombie Vita, which is the living zombie, outnumbered the zombie Mortis. We had an equal amount in 61 to 65. Now, going up to this next chart, you can see that there's a big change. In 1966 to 1970, we have a total of three films, which is a drop from the previous five years. However, all of these films were your zombie Mortis. And one of those films in 1968 was Night of the Living Dead, which is credited as being the forerunner of the modern zombie. Now, we see another jump in 71 to 75 of a total of 14 films. They were all zombie mortis. 76 to 80, we see a, an overall decline. However, one of those films in 1978 was Romero's second zombie feature, Dawn of the Dead 
and my personal favorite. In 1981 to 1985, we see another drastic jump. A total of 25 Zombie Mortis films were released. One of these films was Romero's third feature, Day of the Dead. 86 to 90, another spike, both Zombie Vita and Zombie Mortis. 91 to 95, and 96 to 2000, we do see an overall decline. Now, to be fair, the 90s weren't really good to horror movies. There weren't a whole lot released, and the ones that were were not the greatest. But moving here to 2001 to 2005, we see a drastic spike in zombie films, both Zombie Vita and Zombie Mortis. Now, to be fair, movies are easier to make as resources are cheaper and easier to come by. And most of these films were straight-to-DVD releases. 88 Zombie Mortis films to 3 Zombie Vita films. Now, one of those Zombie Vita films was Danny Boyle's 28 Days Later, which was released in 2002. In 2004, we saw the Dawn of the Dead remake. Not the first movie to feature running zombies, but probably the most popular across demographic groups. Also in 2004, we saw the, the movie Shaun of the Dead. In 2006 to 2008, we saw a spike of 19 Zombie Vita films and 67 Zombie Mortis films. Now that's a total of five less movies that were made the year before. But in 2005, Romero's fourth film, Land of the Dead, was released. 2007, we saw 28 Weeks Later and the movie Wreck. And in 2008, we saw Romero's fifth film, Diary of the Dead. Now I left out all the 2009 data because it's just too new and I don't have all the information yet. But according to the list, there were 50-plus films released in 2009. That's a big jump from the 18 released in 2008. And one of those films, of course, was Zombieland, starring Woody Harrelson, which was very popular, did very well at the box office. In 2010, Romero's Survival of the Dead is due to be released. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that we're going to see an even larger spike in the number of zombie movies over the next few years.